We have the eagerly anticipated INEO 2.4 review today. We will be taking a close look at the handheld and comparing it with others that have the 6800U processor. And a big thanks to Retro Game Corps for lending us their INEO 2. Check the channel out, the link is in the description. First, a quick unboxing. We have a bunch of user guides covering the INEO 2 and iSpace launcher. Next, we have the INEO 2 itself, which we will show more detail shortly. Underneath, we have all the accessories, including charger and plug adapters for most regions around the world. There is also a USB Type-C cable, two USB Type-C to Type-A adapters, and some replacement screw covers for the handheld. The iNeo 2 measures around 10.4 by 4.1 by 1.42 inches and weighs 680 grams. The front of the handheld is covered with a single sheet of glass which supposedly has an anti-fingerprint coating. All of your usual gaming controls are present including LED lit hall sensor analog sticks, a comfortable to use D-pad and gaming buttons. Along the top are the shoulder buttons and hall sensor triggers. There are two small shortcut buttons which can be configured in the ISP software. There is a power button with a built-in fingerprint sensor and a volume rocker. And last but not least, there are two USB Type-C ports. On the bottom is a USB Type-C port, a micro SD card slot and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The iNeo 2 is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 6800G processor which has 8 cores and 16 threads running up to 4.7GHz with a max TDP of 28 watts. There's a choice of 16 or 32 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM and a choice of 512, 1TB or 2TB of PCIe for SSD. For communications there is Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. There's a 50.25 watt hour rechargeable battery to keep the iNeo 2 running. In our test, whilst running Cinebench on the loop at 28 watts, we got a time of 1 hour 12 minutes, and whilst running idle on the desktop, we got 4 hours and 27 minutes. It's not far off the same time as the One X Player Mini Pro. Whilst running Cinebench, we also tested the highest temperature and fan noise. We got a high temperature of 45 degrees and fan noise of 69 decibels. It's a little cooler and 1 decibel higher than the One X Player Mini Pro. A quick mention for iSpace if you're not familiar with it. The included iSpace software is great to use and transforms the handheld into a more console-like experience. Your installed games are shown on the home and game screen and you have shortcuts to commonly use settings. You can also customise the RGB lighting that is around the two analogue sticks. Whilst playing the game, you can tap the IA key and it will bring up an overlay where you can access shortcuts such as changing the fan speed, resolution, TDP and more. It's a very useful app and we are happy to see that it's constantly being worked on and adding new features. We are running the benchmarks at 28 watts TDP to keep in line with our handheld benchmark format. We will be comparing the results with other handouts at the end of the benchmarks. PCMark runs a series of tests covering day-to-day -day tasks from web browsing to image processing. It gives us a good overview of the general performance. The INEO 2 scores 6384, which is in the same ballpark as other handouts. Cinebench tests the CPU to see its performance on either single or multi-core tests. For the multi-core test, the iNeo 2 scores 10989. 3DMark tests the CPU and GPU to see how well they work together in video processing tasks. For the Time Spy benchmark, the iNeo 2 scores 2710, which is in line with other handouts. For Firestrike, we got a score of 6689. And for Night Raid, we got a score of 25,081. Crystal Disk Mark runs a series of tests on the storage to see its performance across different reading and writing patterns. We got a highest read speed of 2,573 megs and write speed of 1,775 megs. The new format for the game's benchmarks we used in our One X Player Mini Pro video did not get any complaints, so we guess you liked it. We run the benchmarks at 11, 20 and 28 watts at the device's maximum resolution. 
and to find common ground with other handhelds we also run at 28 watts on 800p resolution we start the gaming benchmarks with the old but gold shadow of the tomb raider running on the lowest graphic settings at 1200p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 68 and at 800p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 93 on to something a bit newer with Cyberpunk 2077 running on the low graphic settings. At 1200p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 48.78 and at 800p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 69.3. At 1200p 20 watts we get 42.5 and 11 watts we get 23.45. And we get bang up to date with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 running on the minimal graphic settings. At 1200p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 67. And at 800p at 28 watts we get an average frame rate of 94. At 1200p 20 watts we get 59 and 11 watts we get 32. First a summary of the benchmarks across the different TDPs. We saw a similar pattern with other 6800U handhelds in that around the 25 watts TDP area the returns or performance starts to drop. There is a large difference in performance between 11 and 20 watts, but less so between 20 and 28 watts. We did run a couple of benchmarks at 33 watts and saw little difference between it and 28 watts. And now to the 1200p 28 watt results compared with the One X Player Mini Pro, GBD WinMax 2 and a pre-production sample of the AOK Zoe A1 for reference. The scores for the most part are very similar to each other. As always if we were to run the benchmarks a few times we get different scores. So we can take from this that the performance is essentially the same as each other. In our One X Player Mini Pro review, I mentioned that not having an outright fastest handheld is good as it gives us the choice based on the handheld's design, price and other features rather than being pushed towards one because it is the fastest. We will now try some games at playable graphics levels for the best visuals and best battery life. We are essentially using the same settings as the One X Player Mini Pro due to the same performance levels. At 1200p 28 watts, we can run Overwatch 2 on the high graphic settings with no upscaling. There may be some occasional drops below 60 FPS, but nothing that will ruin the gameplay. At 800p at 11 watts, you can run the game just fine with the low graphic settings. With Forza Horizon 5, you can run at 1200p with a mix of medium and high graphic settings. For best battery life you can go with 800p on very low graphics at 11 watts TDP. For Doom Eternal we tried at 1200p and got a mix of low and medium settings for 60fps. If you drop the resolution to 800 you can go up to the high graphic settings. For best battery life you can run at 800p on low graphics at 15 watts TDP. For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign, we recommend 800p 28 watts on the balanced graphic settings, which will keep you above 60 for the most part. For the multiplayer mode, you will probably want to as high as possible, so we went with 800p 28 watts on minimal graphics with no upscaling. Again, the emulation performance is much the same as the other handhelds. You can run everything up to the PlayStation 2 era with no issues at all. You can even run them at lower TDPs to save battery life. We will take a brief look at some of the newer systems to see how well they run. Providing the games are compatible, you should see very good performance on the Xbox emulator Zemu. We tried a few different games and had no issues, but it does depend on the game being compatible. Performance is mixed on Citra. Games such as Sonic Generations will see shader caching lag upon first playthrough. After that it is fine. Other games such as Ridge Racer 3D pretty much work fine on the first playthrough, with some minor shader cache lags occasionally. Other less demanded games will run great. Compatible games work quite well on the Xbox 360 emulator Xenia. Sonic Racing Transformed and Project Gotham Racing 2 run at full speed. On Halo 3 you may see some drops whilst the next part of the map is loading in, but overall the performance is very impressive. 
Again, providing the game is compatible, you will get some great performance with near solid 60 FPS on many PlayStation 3 games. Tekken 3, Wipeout HD, Out to One Arcade and Skate 3 all work with next to no issues. If you are a PS3 fan, then the 6800U based standouts are perfect for you. For Yuzu and Ryojinx, it again depends if the emulators support the game. If it does, then you will generally get decent performance with games running at full or near full speed for third and first party games. Overall, the Iron Neo 2 is very impressive. In terms of performance, it's the same as the other 6800G based handhelds, which I am happy to see. You can run the latest AAA games and actually be able to play them. Though, with some, it may be on lower resolutions and graphic settings, but you can still play them. And for emulation, the 6800G processor is great with games running at full speed on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 amongst others. I have nothing negative to say about the performance at all. The design of the Iron Neo 2 is good. It feels comfortable in the hand and it's not too heavy to play for long periods of time, though you will likely be resting on your lap or table whilst playing. The single sheet of glass covering the front is a nice touch, something we haven't seen before. Talking about touches, it's definitely not fingerprint proof as they claim. As mentioned earlier in the video, it does come down to the design and features of the handheld as to which one you should buy. The Iron Neo 2 does have the excellent IO space, which others do not have and have relatively basic features in comparison. So this could be a deciding factor in your choice for example. Let us know in the comments which handheld you would choose as we are interested to find out why. And if you would like to order the Iron Neo 2, you can do so at joix.co.uk or joix.net for worldwide shipping. Use the discount code ironeo 2 5 off on the checkout. That wraps up our Iron Neo 2 review. We hope you found it useful. As mentioned, we do get many new viewers but not many new subscribers. So please take a moment to subscribe as it really helps to grow the channel. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next video.